Hi and welcome back to another video from Effective Dashboards. In this video we're going to look at the waterfall chart again. So this is part two of a, a two-part series and we're going to focus in on looking at these values here and how we can explain those values and how we can add some additional tooltips or data to help explain them in more detail. Okay, so in the first part of this video series, we looked at creating a, uh, a waterfall chart and I looked at a couple of scenarios. So you can look at that video, there'll be a link above here, somewhere in the, in the right, right hand corner and you can go and check that out. But in this video, we're going to build on the previous one and we're going to look at these values here. So I'm going to go and click on this tab here. And we can see here that we've got a smaller version, but it's exactly the same data. And just to explain it again, we've got at the start of the month, or the start of the period, the 18th, we've got 2,394 work orders. We've had some increases here in maintenance, operations and drilling. There's been no change in engineering and other. All the other ones have been, had no change. And then we've had a decrease in integrity of 51. Now these values here are something that's really important to remember is that these are net increases or net decreases. Okay, so we can see here that there's a tooltip and that gives us a little bit more information related to the category. So the category there is maintenance. Uh, it's a department that's a category. And we can see that maintenance had 1,822 work orders on the 18th of March. And then by the time a week had passed, they had increased by 16 to 1,838. Yeah. So what that means is there's been a net increase. Now, what you can't see and what's not obvious here is what that swing is. And someone might ask this question here. How do we see the 16 maintenance work orders that have increased over the week? Okay, how do we see those 16 work orders? And the because this is a net increase, then unless the work orders have increased by 16 and there's been no reduction of any any sort, then you're not going to be able to identify those 16 work orders. So there could have been, for example, 116 new work orders added. Okay, 116 new work orders could have been added between these two periods here. And 100 work orders could have been closed and removed from a backlog. And that would have given us a net result of 16. Okay, so it could be 1,016 added and 1,000 removed and that would have gave us a net result in 16. So the, the more pertinent question is, how do I see which new work orders have been added over that period? And it may not be 16, in fact, it's highly, highly unlikely to be 16 new maintenance work orders because, because there'll be other ones that have been removed. So this is a net increase. So let's go and we'll look at how we can actually uh, identify those figures and I'll go through a method for displaying the increase and decrease over the period that might add an extra level of um, insight and understanding to the, the, the user so they, they know not to ask this question. So first of all we've got a table underneath and I've filtered that table, if I just click on here, I've filtered that table for the 18th and I'm going to go and um, I've added in, so the list of work orders here, the department, and I've added in a work order count just so we can see the work orders there. Now I'm going to go and remove this field here. We'll add that back in, in again in a second. And we can see here that the work order count here, I'll just remove that as well, is 2,394, which we'd expect. It's a table of the work orders filtered for that date. And it's all of the different categories. Now if I click on here, what do we see? We see 1,822, and that's the value that we see here. So that's all tying up nicely. Okay, so the first thing we need to do as part of this is we need to identify. So remember, we're on the 18th, so we need to identify which work orders were removed during this period. Okay, so for each one of these work orders, I'm going to look ahead in time, and I'm going to check to see if it still exists. Let's get rid of this just now. Still exists uh, on the 25th. Okay, so we're going to be on the 18th and go through each of these work orders and I'm going to say, okay, do I still exist on the 25th? So to do that, we're going to go and look at work orders that are removed during the period. So we've got a flag here. Right, okay, so what I'll do is I'll just talk you through that. 
I'll open up this. So there's some variables here, and then we've got a calculation. So the first variable is going to be the worker number. Then the second variable is the current date, which is going to be this date here, and this work order here for the work order number. And then we're going to go and get the next week's date, which is going to be the current date plus 7. Okay, so that's going to return a date, which is going to be the 25th. And then we're going to do a calculation. So we're going to use calculate, and calculate, remember, allows us to modify the filter context. So it allows us to look at information that was just not necessarily in this context here. And we are going to count the number of rows. And those rows are going to be a result of a filter that's applied to all of the work orders. Okay, so we're going to take all the filters, all the other filters off the work order details. We're going to look through the whole table and we're going to count the number of rows that are returned where the work order is date is next week's date and the work order key is the current work order number. So essentially we're going to look into the future, into the 28th. We're going to count the number of work, we're going to count, um, the number of rows returned where this date is the 20, um, 25th and this work order exists. Okay, so if the count rows is, essentially if the count rows is greater than one, we know the work order exists in the future date. If it's not, we know it doesn't exist. So then we're going to say, okay, if work order is in next week's, um, so if this, this number returned here is greater than zero, then we know the work order was removed during the week, okay? Because um, it is no, because it exists in the future date. Okay, so we know that work order wasn't removed during the week. If this is not greater than zero, i.e. there's no value returned, then it's yes. We know the work order was removed during the week. Okay, so we could probably write this up in a slightly better way, but hopefully you understand this. And um, we're looking ahead, and anything that's yes means it was removed during the week. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to add in a filter on this table here. So we've got the filter here. It was removed during the week is yes. Okay, and we can see that that now counts up to 100. So 100 work orders were removed during this week. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to copy this table here. I'm going to just move it across here and I'm going to go and change the filter on here and I'm going to change that to be 25th and I'm going to remove this and I'm going to remove that field from here and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say okay well we know that 100 work orders were removed during a week because they exist here but they don't exist here and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at, okay, which work orders exist on the 25th but didn't exist back on the 18th. And remember, we've got to do it from the point of view of this work order table here, this data set here, because if it does exist in this data set here then it, and it doesn't exist here, we need to be, be able to count that number. So we're going to go and add another flag, work order added during the week. And we're going to go and I'll just talk you through that. It's very similar to the other one. So we've got the current work order. We've got the current date. Now, this time we're looking backwards to say, OK, did that work order exist last week? And we're interested in work orders which are in here, which didn't exist in the previous week. So we're looking at the current date minus 7. Last week's date is the current date minus 7. And then we're going to use the same calculate statement here. We're going to calculate the number of rows and we're going to calculate that over all the work filtered that's returned in a table, which is filter a filter of all of the work orders where last week's date equals the current work order number. Okay, so sorry, where last week's, where the date equals last week's date and the work order number equals the current work order number. So it's going to count that number of rows for each one of these. Now remember, this is calculated in a row context, it's a calculated column. So it's going to count the number of rows for this work order here, this work order here, this work order here, this work order here, the number of rows it finds in this table. Okay, so if the number of rows is greater than zero, we know that, nope, it wasn't added during a week because it existed in that previous week. And if it's yes, we know that it was added during the week because it didn't exist during that previous week. It's a new work order that's been added.
So let's go and add in a, a filter here. And we can see that 70 work orders were added during the week. So these 70 work orders did not exist in the previous week, but do exist in this week. Okay, so you might need to look at this and get your head around it a few times. Just this logic here it can sometimes be a little bit confusing. Um, but the end result is is here, and it, it's given us two numbers here. So what we can see is that 100 work orders were added. 70 work orders were, were removed, and that has given us our net reduction of 30. Okay, so here we've got 2,394, th two and at the end of the week, with 2,364. But over that period, and it's not obvious just looking at this here, we had an increase in 100, and then we had a decrease in 70. Okay, so in actual fact, a hundred, uh, 70 new work orders have been added during the week. 70 new work orders. So these are the work orders. If you want to see, okay, what's the new work that's been added, these are the work orders that you should focus in on. Now, if we go and click on maintenance, we should be able to see this. Yep. So what we see is that 16 is a result of 35 work orders being removed during the week. And let's just make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. And 51 new work orders. Now that's just coincidental that it's the same numbers there, so it's not, it doesn't represent this integrity of work orders. But 51 new maintenance work orders were added during the week. So we've got 50 new work orders, 51 new work orders have gone into a backlog. So that should be the things we want to focus on if we want to understand, okay, what is a new work? This is not new work. This is a net result of the new work minus the, the, um, the completed work. So something really important, something that, um, can catch people out and something that you can see um, you can now go in and actually demonstrate how, how that works and I would say that if you want to be able to show people okay here's the work that's removed then add a table similar to this and if you want to see the work that's been added then add this table here and these are the new work orders that have been added into the to the data set that weren't in this one here. Okay so I did say this would be a two-part series but I've actually decided to change it into a third part so this is the end of the second video. If you like this video and you found it useful for explaining how these values are calculated and how you can explain what this um, what this 16 is or isn't, then give it a big thumbs up. That would be great. And if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos and the next video in the Waterfall series, then subscribe and press the bell and you'll be kept up to date. Thanks again for listening and I'll talk to you in the next video.